We're only going to cover one game this episode, but we'll touch on a few different topics. The first is how RTS games play with the touchpad, plus a limited number of face buttons. And the second topic will expand on this by talking about button modifiers. I'll also be going over my control scheme used with Red Alert 3, in the hopes that you can utilize something similar in your top-down games. I'm not that great at RTS games, especially so with Command & Conquer. I've probably spent the most amount of time in StarCraft, but that was some time ago. I eased myself into this game by running through the tutorials, where I was able to change bindings and plan for where I wanted future keys to be on the controller. Starting off with the camera, I didn't want to use mouse to pan around. I'd rather have a dedicated way of going about this. The right click and mouse drag style turned out to be way too sensitive for me, so I resorted to binding the joystick to arrow keys, then setting the game's camera pans to them as well. Right and left bumper are bound to W and S, which control camera zoom. Left and right click are on the trigger clicks, so we have some room for fancy actions like shift on the left squeeze to select additional unit. The A button is, naturally, our A key, which allows us to issue an attack move order. Y is set to F as the units function in-game. X and B are kind of throwaway keys for now, but are bound as E and R for cycling through production tabs. To be honest, this is really all you need to play the game. However, your overall enjoyment will increase significantly if we look at modifiers and assigning the pads to different F keys. You've noticed I left out the grips, and that's because we're using them as mode shifters or what's more commonly known as button modifying. Left grip accesses another pad on the left, and the right grip controls an additional layer on the right pad. For simplicity, the keys ascend in number going clockwise, so up is F1, right is F2, and so on. The second layer handles F keys from F5 through F8. Mode shifting will only work on both pads, stick, and face buttons. So as a result, modifiers must be set within those groups. Mode shifting also requires the assigned button to remain unbound, which means the grips are dedicated to this purpose and cannot be used as additional keyboard keys. The tricky part in all of this is memorizing which buttons control which function. I think with better developer support, we'll get on-screen Steam controller prompts, but this may be wishful thinking. Since the right trackpad acts as a one-to-one -one mouse, it was pretty easy clicking on enemies or assigning movement orders. Of course, this isn't as fast as a mouse, but while I was out in the living room allocating these binds, I did find it reasonably pleasurable. It was able to click on my intended building, and more importantly, the smaller production icons on the right of the screen. I'm really worried about the success of this controller, as the notion of it replacing your keyboard has been perpetuated by 2-bit journalists. I think if you've been following my videos, I'm portraying a much more honest and accurate representation of what to expect with this controller. With all of that said, I'm happy with this. I really am. Mode shifting is really cool, but it's important people are getting the right information. I think this will be a viable way to casually play RTS games, whether you're in your bed or out on the couch. All of the binds you've seen in my videos will be made public, so if you're itching to try out a game that I've shown, see if it pops up in the community templates. For now, thank you for watching, and I'm eager to hear what you all think of the controller when they arrive later today.